Hey everyone, my name is Michael. I'm the developer advocate lead here at Xano. In this video, I'm going to cover a brand new function, which is our try catch function. Now this has been widely requested in the community for some time, so we're very excited to announce it's now part of the function stack. Try catch works a little bit like this. Uh, it's a common principle in programming languages, so you can define a, a set of logic or code to try out. Uh, if it meets any exception or error, then you can execute the catch section. Now there's a final component to it, which is called the finally section. So try, catch, finally. And finally we'll execute uh, no matter if the try is successful or if it's a failure. Of course, it is optional. Uh, I know that's a lot, but let's go ahead, jump into Xano. We'll run through some examples. It'll start to make a little more sense. We'll talk about how it's a little different than a conditional. And we'll also show we have now a uh, throw error function, which can be used in conjunction with try catch in case you want to define uh, specialized or custom errors in case your try section fails. So without further ado, let's jump to Xano and start to unravel what all this means. All right, over to Xano now. So to find our try catch statement, if we go to our function stack and into utility functions, we'll see try catch right here. Also, here's throw error, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Let's first jump to try catch. And as you can see, here are our three sections. So try is that set of logic that we want to try. Uh, catch will only be executed if the try fails and finally gets executed no matter what. So whether try is successful, finally still executes. Whether try is a failure, then the catch block gets executed and finally still gets executed. So let's jump into uh, an example. This is going to be a common use case I see in Xano. Uh, oftentimes, we see um, API endpoints that have an option to uh, upload a file, right? And so file upload, if you're unfamiliar with it, we have an input. That's a file resource. We'll call this file. And then we might have, or then we do have, I should say, if we go to content upload, create image metadata, uh, we have our file resource that maps into this, right? And then oftentimes that's met with adding something to the database. Not always, but typically uh, that's what we see here, right? And I'll just map this image field to my image variable. Let's also add a, just a name input here just to give that record uh, all the data that it might need, right? Um, great, so that is the image upload flow, right? Like let's say this is maybe a user profile. Someone's either editing it or adding to it, but maybe they don't want to add an uh, image, right? Maybe that's not actually required for their profile. Uh, what happens though, if no file resource is supplied, our create image from file will actually throw an error because it can't do anything with you know no image, right? It can't create metadata from that. So for example, if I just you know run this here, we see that, oops, an error occurred, missing file resource is our exception, right? But maybe we still want to you know, add the name in, right? Or whatever other information our, our user profile uh, is being supplied with, right? So try catch will really come in handy here. And let me start to uh, add, add this stuff into the try catch to show you what that might look like. So I'm gonna drag in my image from file into the try section and also my add record, right? So we're going to try to execute this, right? Maybe sometimes there will be um, that file provided and this runs great. But in case there's not, I'm just going to copy this add record and drag this into catch. And let's go in here and actually hide this image field because maybe we still want to add that name, right? Or that other information that's going into the profile. So if number one, um, point one here, this create image from file throws an exception, well, no problem. Then we just jump into our catch section and we still add the name, no problem. So let's go ahead and, and put what this looks like in practice. I'll add our stuff one variable in here, which will either come from uh, my try section or my catch. So let's give this a run. So let's go name here. I might say Paris, let me pick a file. And the file I've chosen is a picture of the Eiffel Tower. But if I go ahead and run this, well, great, no problem. We ran through, uh, we hit the create image from uh, file, we added the record, and then we skip the catch altogether. And we can even jump to the debugger. It's all nested in the try catch. Um, but as you can see, we ran all that. But now what happens if you know I reset this and I don't supply uh, any sort of file, right? Let's go ahead and say 
Los Angeles here with no file. And if I run this, well, no problem, right? 1.1 through that exception. So our try catch was able to go ahead and say, still add this record, but do it in this way, right? So we ignore that image field and we still add that city Los Angeles to our database. Um, now, finally, finally is going to execute just no matter what, right? So maybe in here we want to do some logic that sends an email, right? Maybe this is a user profile, says, sends an email to like the user, says like, congratulations, um, you know, you have added, uh, you've updated your profile, something like that. So that gets executed no matter what, whether we uh, hit the catch section or just the try section, uh, finally gets executed no matter what. So something like a, an email might be an example here, but there's plenty of different use cases where if something fails, uh, you might still want to add the finally. So we actually don't even need the catch. Um, so try catch can actually be optional where we skip the catch if there's an exception here and we add in a finally. So finally gets executed no matter what. Next, let's introduce the throw error. So there will be times when your try fails that in the catch section, you actually want to uh, throw an error. And let's go ahead and actually look at what that looks like. So for throw error, we can give the error a custom name and I'll just call this example here. When I drop down on the value, you can see when it's uh, inserted into this catch section, we have different options that we can throw. We can throw uh, the result of the function that errored out. Now, most times there will not be a result, so keep that in mind, really will depend on the function. We can go ahead and throw the error message accompanied uh, with the exception or error, the error code, or the name of the error. So for example, let me first just start out with message here and I'll hide this add record. Let me save this. And so if I run this without any file, right? Well, we will throw that uh, message that says missing file resource from uh, our create image from file error or our exception really. Um, if I go ahead and say code here, um, what we should see here, this is an exception, so we should just see exceptions. That would be the same for name. So um, in certain cases, you might want to actually throw the error, um, but you want to be specific about what's being outputted in that error. Uh, that's what the throw error is useful for in that catch section. So how is try catch finally different than a conditional if else then statement? So a conditional if else then statement is designed to evaluate whether or not a statement is true. Uh, if it is, execute some type of logic. If it's not, right, if it's false, execute the else. Try catch is used for error handling. So if like an unexpected error happens, then what you can do is you can execute your catch logic and no matter what, execute your final, final logic. So no matter if there's no error or if there is an error, that finally logic gets executed. So try catch finally for error handling, conditional if else then to evaluate uh, a certain value or if something is true in your function stack. So hope this was helpful. Uh, really excited about this try catch finally. It's gonna be very, very useful uh, for implementing in a lot of different use cases. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to the team uh, and let us know how you like the new try catch finally functionality.